All right, this is fourth grade, module four, module five, lesson six. There we go. And in this lesson, students are going to be decomposing fractions using the area model to show two fractions are equivalent to one another. Uh, the difference in this lesson prior compared to the prior lesson is that now instead of just dealing with unit fractions, we're now showing any two fractions are equivalent to one another. For example, we're going to be showing that two-thirds is equal to six-ninths, for example. So let's get started on this. So the first thing I think about when I look at this slide is, man, there is a lot of writing going on. So parents and teachers, don't let this freak you out. Don't let this freak out your students. So basically what this is saying is um, we've got this fraction right here, and we're going to start with two-fifths. Now, how do we know that it's two-fifths? Well, we know it's two-fifths because we can see it right here. Here's one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, and five-fifths. So I've kind of outlined it in red. So there's our two-fifths. And then it's saying it wants us to turn it into tenths. So in order to do that, we need to cut each of those fifths into two pieces, and that's how we're going to get tenths, because 5 times 2 is 10. And so that tells us we now have tenths. So this is 1 tenth, 1 tenth, 1 tenth, and 1 tenth. So we can clearly see that 2 fifths is equivalent to, uh, oops, not two-tenths, is equivalent to four-tenths. So that's what we're going to put over here, that two-fifths is equivalent to four-tenths. Now, historically, in the old-school way of teaching, we'd stop right there. Yep, two-fifths is e equal to four-tenths. Let's move on. Um, but what's different in Eureka Math and in Common Core in general is we're not just content with getting the answer. We also want to explain to the students why this is working. So we've got this series of events going on here, logical statements that really kind of reinforce the fact that two-fifths is equal to four-tenths. Um, this is not the standard algorithm. Eventually, students are going to just jump straight from two-fifths to four-tenths but it will be the result of them understanding what's going on instead of them just memorizing some rule. So let's fill in these blanks. So basically they're saying start with two-fifths and decompose it into unit fractions. So that's one-fifth plus one-fifth. And we can see over here that one-fifth is equal to one-tenth plus one-tenth. And then another fifth is one-tenth plus one-tenth. So that gives you four-tenths. Another way to think of this is this one-fifth is equal to one-tenth. This, oh, plus one-tenth. This one-fifth is equal to one-tenth plus one-tenth. That's kind of what we have here. And then this one-tenth plus one-tenth is really two times one-tenth. This one-tenth plus one-tenth is really two times one-tenth. So now we have two times a tenth plus two times a tenth that equals four tenths because that's really this is two tenths and this is two tenths and that equals four tenths and then lastly another way to think of this is two fifths is four times one tenth and we can see that over here you have four one tenths and four times one tenth is equal to four tenths so that's a lot of writing that really is just the old school way of saying, hey, two-fifths is equal to four-tenths because each fifth got doubled. So each of these shaded in fifths got doubled is essentially where we're going with this. But at this point, we're not ready to just teach them an algorithm. We're really trying to develop understanding even if it feels a little bit laborious at the time. In the long run, it's going to be better for our students. So let's put this into practice. So we're going to start with four-fifths, because that's what I was given here, four-fifths. And it says we want fifteenths. So that means I'm going to cut each of those fifths into three parts. 
and that's going to give us fifteenths because we now have three times five is fifteen parts. So those four fifths has turned into uh, those fifths have turned into fifteenths, and instead of having four fifths, we now have twelve fifteenths. So we can see that four fifths is equal to twelve fifteenths. Now. There's a lot of writing, and this feels a little bit laborious, and to be honest, it really kind of is. So I'm going to short change a little bit. I'm going to say, I'm going to change it a little bit. I might make it a little bit easier for my students. I might say, okay, four-fifths is equal to one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth. And that's, let's see, how am I going to show that? That's right here. One-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth, okay? And then I'm going to say, yeah, but each of those fifths is really three-tenths. So that's one-tenth plus one-tenth plus one-tenth. So this equals one-fifth because one Oops, I should call them fifteenths. Those are fifteenths. Fifteenths, not tenths. Fifteenths. Alright. Because these three fifteenths is equal to one fifth right here. Because we could see it right here. Here's three of them to equal one whole. Uh, one fifth. Alright, and I'm going to just keep repeating. So these guys go with the first one. And then we've got another fifteenth plus one-fifteenth, plus one-fifteenth. So these three equals this fifth, plus, oh boy, I'm going to get, I'm going to have to get dinky here, one-fifteenth, plus one-fifteenth, plus one-fifteenth. And these guys equals this fifth, and lastly, oh gee whiz, I'm going to have to squeeze in right here. 1 15th plus 1 15th plus 1 15th. And this is equal to that last fifth right there. So now what do we end up with? How many 15ths do we end up with? Well, we end up with 12 copies of the 1 15th. And we can see that 12 copies of the 1 15th means we have 12 15ths. <laughs> I'm trying to squeeze that in there. Whoa, there. So basically, all of this is leading us to see that 4 fifths is equal to 12 15ths right here. Another way to say this is we can say, hey, each of our fifths got cut up into three pieces. So each of our fifths got cut that we shaded in. So every fifth got cut into three pieces giving us 15 pieces total. So each of the four pieces that were shaded in also got cut into three pieces, because you can see it right here, giving us 12. So 12 shaded out of 15 total. Four out of five. So, And that's what this three is. If you're going to cut every one of these fifths into three pieces, then each of these four shaded in fifths is cut into three pieces. So ultimately, this is the kind of like the standard algorithm, but this is designed to make all of this math kind of developmentally make sense. So here we are to draw area models to show the decomposition. To, to, to Essentially, what we're doing is we're going to be drawing area models to show that these two fractions are equal. And then, of course, we're going to show them as the product and the sum and all the decompositions. So... What, is, what does this look like? Well, we're going to begin by drawing a fraction for two-thirds. So let's draw two-thirds. And so on. here's my rectangle, and I've cut it into three pieces. And here is my two-thirds. Now, because it says it's supposed to be equal to four-sixths, that means I need to cut it into six pieces. So each of my thirds has been cut into two pieces. So we can now see that two-thirds 
is equal to 4 sixths. And how do we know that? Well, because here's a sixth, here's a sixth, here's a sixth, here's a sixth, and then here's a sixth, and here's a sixth. So 2 thirds is equal to these 4 sixths. So that's how we know that these two guys are the same. Now let's do all the mathematics to show that this is true. Well, we're going to start with 2 thirds. And I'm going to say, well, 2 thirds is equal to 1 third plus 1 third. And I'm going to say 1 third is equal to 1 sixth plus 1 sixth. And then the other third is 1 sixth plus 1 sixth. So this 1 sixth plus 1 sixth is equal to this third. And we can see it right here. 1 sixth plus 1 sixth is equal to 1 third. And then we can see that 1 sixth plus 1 sixth here is equal to this third right here. Because really, if we want to think about it, we could say, well, here's a third, here's a third, and here's a third. And so each third is ha equals 2 sixths. All right, and then we could keep going with this, and we can say, well, that is equal to 4 times 1 sixth. And we know that 4 times 1 sixth is equal to 4 sixth. And so 2 thirds is equal to 4 sixths. Now, I'm not writing it, all these number stuff, exactly the way Eureka Math does. I, I'm kind of simplifying it, doing a little bit more streamlined, just to make life go a little bit easier uh, for our teachers and our parents. And this one last example, they keep taking away the scaffolding each step of the way. We're just supposed to create a fraction. Oh, let's do three-fifths. And we're going to draw the area model for it. So let's draw the area model for three-fifths. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to shade in three of those. So there's my three-fifths. So I just did step one. Step two, shade in more than one fractional unit. Oh, I just did step two as well. Now step three, partition the area model again to find an equivalent fraction. So oh, let's, let's cut it into four pieces. One, I mean four rows. So I've partitioned it further. I used three more slices to create four rows. So now I've just shown that three-fifths is equal to twentieths. So there's my twentieths because I have 20 little pieces. And I can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is 12 twentieths. So here is the classic, that three-fifths is equal to 12 twentieths. And essentially, this is where the old school math would have left off. Three-fifths is equal to 12 twentieths. Good. Move on. Uh, but we're going to try and connect that with the mathematics to show why that is the case. So let's start with, well, three-fifths is equal to, and let's do um, one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth. And that's equal to, now each of those fifths is equal to, uh, I'm going to show you right here, each of those fifths, like there's a fifth, is equal to um, four twentieths. So we can see that that's a four twenty. I mean that's a one twentieths, that's a one twentieths, that's a one twentieths, and that's a one twentieths. So we can see that this fifth right here and I'm kind of kind of shortchanged this a little bit, is equal to 4 twentieths plus another 4 twentieths plus another 4 twentieths. I'm kind of shortchanging this. And that's equal to 12 times 1 twentieth. So I kind of zipped a little bit through because essentially... We have a twentieth here, one twentieth here, one twentieth here, one twentieth here, one twentieth, one twentieth, one twentieth, one twentieth, one twentieth, one twentieth, and one twentieth, and one twentieth. So how many twentieths are we going to have? Well, we're going to have 12 of them. 
And that shows us that 12 times 1 20th is 12 twentieths. So all of this, so starting here, ending up here, shows us that 3 fifths is equal to 12 twentieths. And really what we want students to be seeing that is that each fifth got cut into four pieces. So each of the shaded fifths, there were three shaded fifths, each of those got cut into four pieces. And so that's how we've got three fifths suddenly turning into 12 twentieths because each of these fifths got cut up into four pieces. Now that's kind of the standard algorithm. We're not quite there yet, but I'm kind of foreshadowing. And that wraps up fourth grade module five, lesson six, showing equivalence for any, using the area model, for any two fractions. For example, two thirds is equivalent to eight twelfths, and we're using the area model to show that that is true.